Good morning, nieces and nephews. The SPY, the S&P 500, gave us a new all-time high close. Guys, yesterday, the SPY closed at 572.3 at the end of the day yesterday. And that's the highest of all time that the SPY has ever closed. Keyword, closed. We did get to a pivot high of 574.38, which is an all-time high high. But we also got that all-time high close at 572.3. Despite getting a new all-time high, uh, me and a bunch of my Discord members, we actually made money with puts. Very interesting how that happened, okay? This is what happened when you just follow the price action, guys. Because the, yesterday, the SPY, it gapped up. You guys can see it opened around uh 574.38 going to a pivot high of 574.7 actually but that's around where it opened 574.38 my plan for yesterday's morning and i wrote the plan you know i have first support at 573.8 and both need to defend there and clear 575 all right that was the bull case and then the bear case is if 573.8 fails and 572 and 570 in play below so we identify both case scenario, the bull case and the bear case, and we await orders from the price action, okay? And I use a 15-minute chart, okay? 15 to 30-minute chart. When it's too, too choppy, I'll go up to a 30-minute chart, but when it's not too choppy, 15-minute chart usually does the trick. And you guys can see that at 9.30 candle where my, um, I'm going to change this to light blue, where my light blue candle was pointing, okay? This yellow line right there is my 573.6 is 7-ish level, okay? It broke it down and closed below it on the 15-minute chart. That was the trigger to go short as a row here. If 573.8 fails, then 572 and 570 in play. And you guys can see what happened for the rest of the day. And once it hit around 570, that's when we got a good, a pretty strong bounce. You guys can see it on the daily chart too. You guys can see it on the daily chart. My orange uptrend line here is based on the 570 level. And I also have a FIB level of 570. Market makers pushed SPY down to 570. And that's where they got buying pressure. Okay. So you guys can see despite closing at all-time highs, we was able to make money off of puts playing it level-to-level -level style. Um, I don't know if anybody swung their puts. I didn't personally. I just got in and got the hell out level-to-level -level style. But you guys can see... This is what sheep style trading is all about. We're just knowing the levels, knowing the setups beforehand, and then we trade it in real time, unbiasedly, level to level. So how do you make money on puts when the SPY is closed at new all-time high? By just simply playing the setups unbiasedly, okay? Now, a lot of people who may not have much experience with trading probably saw the SPY gapped up, and they caught FOMO. Like, oh my gosh, the SPY keeps on going up. I got to get in. I don't want to miss out. And then, boom, once people got FOMO, the market makers pushed it downwards. Those that know, have, you know, years of experience with price action, we didn't get played. We, we were doing fine. The volatility was nice. It was definitely follow-through. For those who may not have as much experience, may need to refine their skill sets a little bit more, they might have struggled, they might have caught FOMO, but we can learn from this, guys. Never a loss, always a lesson. Don't beat yourself up for it. This system is rigged against you, okay? It doesn't mean you can't make money, it's just that it's rigged against you. So don't beat yourself up, just learn from it. Okay, guys, play, know the levels, know the setups, and trade it unbiasedly is always the best approach. Right now, I have support at 572 and 570. Yesterday, we found buying pressure at 570. If that bounce is a dead cat bounce, then 572 and 570 must fail to trigger puts. If today we break down those levels, look to short. I would definitely be bearish below 570 because it's based on an uptrend line and a fib level. Okay, 572 and 570 fail. Look to short with 568.5, 567, and the big back test of 565. That was a previous all-time high in play. Below 565, bears will definitely, definitely be in control all right that's the bear case scenario stay bullish above 570 um clearing five well it's above 572 right now but so if it wants new all-time highs 
Clearing 573.7, uh, 575. Clear those levels, we should go hit 576.5 and the big critical fib level at 578. All right, guys. Just react unbiasedly. Do what the price action says. Uh, triple Q here is about around 488.4 as of recording this. That means next support is at 488 and 486.5. We, we got to a, a gap up. This is not a new all-time high or anything for Triple Q, but uh, it did gap up all the way up to four, above 493, and it, it, you know there was definitely some selling pressure. So if it's going to continue, 488 and 486.5 must fail to put 485, 482, 480, and 478.7 all in play. All right, guys. If the plan is to head back to the upside, all right, then 489 and 491 and 493 must clear. If those levels clear, 495, 497, and 500 would be in play. NVDA. Now, this is interesting here, guys. After we broke out that structure with the orange line, the orange downtrend line, it definitely led to more upside. Uncle talked about a third test of my multi-month downtrend line and get look at that we got the third test and bears definitely stepped up where they needed to okay guys so now that we got the third test of this downtrend line bears need to capitalize on this for them to show bears follow through and trigger more puts support at 122 which is also a fib level must fail okay guys it must fail and that would put uh, a gap fill at 120.8 in play first, then 119, 117.5, and then the FIB level at 116, okay? Below 117.5, I would overall be bearish, but loss of 116, that's a FIB level, would definitely be a loss of a critical level and show bearish fall through. But to even get to those levels, NVDA needs to break down 122, all right? If we are going to try to break out this downtrend line and put in a bottom, then from here, 123.5, 127, and still 120, um, excuse me, 123.5, 125, and then still 127 must clear as resistance. Bottom is only in if 127 clears. Okay, guys, Tesla, definitely some intraday uh, selling pressure, all right, after a gap up. Like I said, I think a lot of people caught FOMO after the gap up. Bulls have been destroying the bears. So when we got that FOMO, a lot of people probably couldn't take it no more and caught FOMO. They just desperately wanted to get money. And what happened? Market makers screwed them all over. This is why I can't stand the market makers, right? We got to know how to trade price action. This is the answer to those, their problems, okay? To, to empower ourselves and build our skill sets. On how to read the price action how to read the charts as of right now tesla's around 255.9 so next resistance at 257 258.5 and 260 if those levels clear guys 262 264 and 265.5 will all be in play now there was selling pressure intraday yesterday and yesterday's close was definitely lower than wednesday's so that is a pullback day technically speaking if the pullback continues, 254 and 252 must fail as support. If those levels fail, 250 or lower would definitely be in play. Going back all the way down to 240 in the 245 zone would definitely not surprise me too much. But it got to break down 254 and 252. All right, guys. Um, ooh, TLN, that was a cool trade I did in my Discord yesterday. Amazing. But we're not going to cover that. That's for Discord members, guys. I'm sorry. But we'll co I'll cover IWM for you guys. Um, IWM tried to go for a gap up yesterday, but ultimately at the end of the day, it closed and broke down the FIB level up to 19.7 once again. In other words, it failed to recapture. Okay, I'm going to continue to stay bearish on IWM as long as below 219.7. It's still bearish below that level, but for follow through, it has to break down 218 and 216.7. Okay, so if you're bearish, IWM is below 219.7. It's a little uncomfortable, but there's hope. If it can break down 218, then you can get a little more comfortable because there's definitely selling pressure and it's likely we head down lower. 216.7 and 215 would be targets. However, getting back above 219.7, 219, 
would not be a good sign, okay? Remember, your job isn't to, to get into trades and exit with profit. That's not your only job. It's also to manage risk. So you don't just know the levels and setups so you can get in a position. Sometimes you know the levels and setups to know when to get out of a position. Make sense, guys? So if you get above 219.7, that's not, that's not bearish. That's bullish. And that will put 221.8, 223, and 224.5 in play. And if getting above 219.7 doesn't convince you to not be bearish then definitely don't be bearish if 221.8 recaptures okay guys that's just my recommendation but you guys do what you feel is best all right let's take a look at the dog pull order 569.97 is where majority of activity came came in mind you i gave you guys that 570 level and i gave you guys a couple of reasons why that level was important and well here's another reason Dark pool level, 569.97, just three cents off of my 570 level, guys. It's pretty much the same thing, okay? And then the other 34% and 19% came around the 572.2 uh, area, which is around my 572 uh, resistant level, okay? So still, I'm sticking by it. My levels, 570 and 572, and, you know, looking at the dark pool levels, it looks like around the area of my levels, the big money players are looking at them too, all right, so why shouldn't we? All right, triple Q, 49.44, um, and then the 30, that's 46% of activity, and then 34% of activity came in at 45.96, and then 20% of activity came in at 49.2. So around that 489-ish level, a lot of activities from the big money, nothing over a billion, though, but that's where they're getting busy at. Uh, NVDA. 124 is the big dark pool level for NVDA. Add that level to your chart. Tesla, 254.22. 97% of activity there. Okay, guys. Add that level to your chart. Did I get IWM? 217.6. 71% of activity came in there, and the 23% of activity came in at 218.86. Nothing over a bill, but that's where they're that's where they're getting busy. They're buying and selling. They're trading. Big money players are trading. Okay, so it looks like I have some new filters. I think one of my uh, Discord members rearranged my filters. What did you guys do for Uncle? Okay, you got 100K premiums. You got all deltas, all expiration date. Looks like they were looking at the ask. Uncle wants to look at above the ask. Uh, they were looking at SPX and triple Q. Uncle Uncle, uh, look at spy my brothers and sisters. Uh, but yeah, I like SPX and Triple Q too. I just, you know, Uncle Cover and Spy. We're going to get the Triple Q though. You guys are also looking at sweeps and out the money. I love that. Yeah, there, there's not that much different from Uncle's. And they saved the layout for me. Appreciate you guys. All right, here we go. Whoa. Are you guys seeing this? Are you... Are you guys seeing this? 100K premium. I'm just trying to make sure all deltas above the ask, spy, sweeps. Oh, wow, guys. Look at that. That's interesting, huh? How long have we, have we been seeing that spy was bearish, huh? And we just kept seeing, based on the price action, spy just continued to melt, melt up to new all-time highs. Look at this. It switched. <laughs> Guys, it has switched. Holy shit. Okay, so let's take a look at the context. October 25th. Wow, look at all these calls. October 18th, November 8th. Wow. All these big money calls just came out of nowhere. Guys, 5.4 million in calls, 2.2 million in puts. If you know, you know, chat. It's been switching. It's switched. Let's see what Triple Q shows. Okay. You guys noticed Triple Q was bullish the whole time while Spy was bearish. Now, while Spy is bullish, Triple Q switched to bearish. Very interesting. We're seeing the big puts coming in now. And then the calls for September 27th. A lot of these calls are going to expire today. Wow. This is a big turnaround, guys. I'm so glad I get to share this with you guys. IWM is also bearish. IWM been bearish though. I, the, IWM throws me off a little bit, not gonna lie. But it's overall bearish. It does have one call for October 13th. 
We'll see. The, the, the call is, the, the, I'll tell you this, the call is for shorter term. The puts is only for November 15th. So definitely keep your eye on that call because that's shorter term. Um, Tesla. Tesla's bullish. October 4th, October 18th. Okay, we have one for expiring today. Where is Tesla at right now? It did gap up a little bit. Just a little bit. A dollar fifty ish from yesterday's close. So there's one call right here. I don't know if he's going to be profitable, but we'll see. And then there's one put right here. They probably lost money on it unless they, I mean, they bought at 3 o'clock power hour. I don't know what their intentions were, but they, if they held it to today, they probably lost money on it. These puts right here probably lost money on it. These calls have some hope. They got time on it. But yeah, Tesla's overall bullish and NVDA is overall bullish as well. Okay. But I tell you this, guys. For me, the big story is seeing SPY and Triple Q switch up like this. Because we've been seeing SPY bearish. We've seen these crazy amounts of puts being bought. And all that happened was SPY go to New Orleans. Like, Market makers wasn't trying to pay those guys. And now look at this. What did they get in FOMO? Are these people getting FOMO? Wow. Just because you got a lot of money don't mean you're a good trader, guys. It takes skills. Okay, guys? And <laughs> you guys can see with the option flow. Man. Anyways, I hope you guys found value in today's video. This was super fun. I get to cover these things for you, and I'm just super grateful. And I hope you guys uh, found, like I said, I hope you guys found value in this. Please like and subscribe. And if you want, definitely join my Discord. I love to serve you guys at a higher level. All right? Thank you, guys. Peace.